So this is Mr. Field and this is my video on covalent bonding. Now before you watch this video you need to make sure you are confident on atomic structure and electron configuration so check out my previous videos on those two things. And in terms of what's in this video we are going to be looking at covalent bonding. We're going to work through some examples of drawing dot and cross diagrams and then we're going to look at the structures of six key compounds that are in the Edexcel GCC specification. So what is a covalent bond? The simple answer is that a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. That's a two mark answer in an exam. One mark for saying shared electrons and the second mark for saying that it's a pair. And it might look something like this. So here we've got the covalent bond between two hydrogen atoms. And what you can see is in between the two nuclei there, you've got that shared pair of electrons. So that is our covalent bond. Why do these things form? Well, the reason why is that the electrons in the covalent bond count towards both of the atoms' outer shells. So it helps them both complete their outer shells, which is what atoms want to achieve to become stable. So, and what we mean by that is the electrons in the pair can go around, can go around one of the atoms like that. So it's got a full shell, but they also can orbit the other atom like that, so that it's got a full shell as well. Now, when we write uh, covalent bonds in diagrams and things, we represent them as two atoms with a single line between them. So that single line that I've highlighted there, but also these single lines here, each of those represents a covalent bond. So each of these lines represents a shared pair of electrons. Now, we can also get double covalent bonds that involve two shared pairs of electrons, and we write those as a double line. So here, that double line, that double line, that double line, those aren't equal signs. These are representing double covalent bonds involving two shared pairs of electrons. Now, the last thing to consider is why do these, um, what's actually holding the atoms together in our covalent bond? So the attraction is an electrostatic attraction between the protons in the nucleus of each atom and the shared pair of electrons in between them. So if we think about that proton there in the nucleus, that is attracted to the negative electrons in between them. And equally, that one's attracted to the negative electrons between them. And that holds the two atoms together. OK, so let's look at some examples of how to draw dot and cross diagrams. And this is where people start to find um, covalent bonding quite difficult. So we'll start with an easy example, which is hydrogen chloride, um, HCl. And we're going to work through this process here. So we're going to start off by drawing our atoms as overlapping circles. Then we're going to draw an electron pair in each overlap, and then we're going to add lone pairs. Now, as we start off drawing our circles to represent the atoms, it's nice and easy with hydrogen chloride. There's just one hydrogen, one chlorine. So we draw them like this, H for hydrogen, Cl for chlorine, with overlapping circles to represent the, um, the outer shells. So that is step one done. So step two then is that we're going to draw an electron pair in each overlap. Now we've only got one overlap, so we're just going to draw one electron pair. Now note, we've drawn it as a dot and a cross. The dot is to represent the electrons from hydrogen, and the cross is to represent the electrons from chlorine. Now we do it this way just so it's clearer to ourselves where the electrons have come from, but we do not have to do it this way. We can do them both as dots, we can do them both as crosses, it doesn't matter. You wouldn't gain or lose any marks in the exam for whatever choice you made, but we normally do it as dots and crosses just to make it clearer what is what. So that's step two done. We've drawn an electron pair in the overlap. The final thing to do, step three, is to add in lone pairs to fill each outer shell. Now hydrogen only needs two electrons for a full shell, so we won't draw any pairs there. But chlorine needs eight electrons for a full shell. It's already got two there, so we're going to add in one, two, three more lone pairs to make it up to eight in chlorine's outer shell. Now there is this little note down here about making sure that you don't use more than the number of electrons that the atom has in its outer shell to start with. Now hydrogen has one electron and that's it there. Chlorine has seven electrons and we've got them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have fulfilled that rule down there, but we'll look at some examples later where that will be a bit more complicated and we need to draw some double bonds. Example two then is a bit more complicated this time. We've gonna, we're going to look at how we would draw this for methane. Now the reason why methane is a bit more difficult is because step one becomes a bit harder. Like what are we going to do? Do we draw? Do we go like this and just draw everything in one big long line with like carbon, 
hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Like there's so many possibilities, it can seem a bit daunting. Now, there's no, you, you as you practice drawing these, you'll get better at spotting the kind of thing to do. But um, I always think to myself, well, hydrogen can only ever have one bond, so it couldn't join to things on both sides like that. Whereas carbon can form four bonds because it's got four electrons in its outer shell, it needs four more. So it will form four bonds. So if you find that a little bit um, difficult to get your head around, what I always try and do is I, I, I always think to myself, hydrogens go around the edges and whatever else goes in the middle. So that will give us this pattern here where we've got carbon in the middle and our four hydrogens around the edge. So that's step one done. Step two is that we're going to draw an electron pair in each overlap. So that will look like this. One, two three, four electron pairs because we've got four overlaps. And step four is to add in, or sorry, step three rather, is to add in lone pairs to complete each outer shell. Now, carbon now has two, four, six, eight electrons in its outer shell. So there's no need to add any lone pairs for that. And each hydrogen only needs two electrons anyway. And they've all got that because remember the, the pair in the overlap counts for both um, so that is happy now. We don't need to add any lone pairs in this example. Our final and most difficult example is carbon dioxide, which has the formula CO2. Now, if we think about step one, drawing our overlapping uh, our atoms as overlapping circles, could it be like that? And that's a common thing that students do where they have three overlaps because there's three atoms. No, you never get that kind of triangle arrangement. Instead, we're going to have a couple of possibilities of straight line arrangements. Now, do we go COO or OCO? As a rule of thumb, atoms tend to be, uh, so molecules tend to be symmetrical. So this one here is not symmetrical, this one is. So that's the option we're gonna go for. As you get more practice, you'll understand why that is. But for now, let's just use that rule of thumb about symmetry. So this will give us this shape here where we've got oxygen, then carbon, then oxygen. Step two, nice and easy for now. We're going to draw in our uh, electron pairs in each of the overlaps. So two overlaps, two electron pairs. And then we move on to step three. Now, step three is going to be a bit more complicated here because this rule here, don't use more than the number of electrons an atom has in its outer shell. That is going to become relevant now. Um, and if we do, we're going to need double bonds. So let's see how that pans out. Now, oxygen's group six, so it has six electrons in the outer shell. Carbon's group four, so it's got four electrons. Um, and so that's what we've got to work with. So if we start with oxygen and put our lone pairs in, we go one lone pair, two lone pair, and that brings us up to five electrons for the oxygen. Now oxygen's only got six to play with. So if we were to add another lone pair there, that would give us seven electrons, which would be too many. So we can't do that. So we're not gonna have that. So instead of adding another lone pair, we need to think about a double bond. So we are going to draw a second shared pair in that overlap between the oxygen and carbon and the same um, idea will play out for the other oxygen so one lone pair two lone pair we can't put another lone pair because that would take us over our six electrons for oxygen so instead we're going to go for a double bond instead with a second shared pair in the overlap and in terms of carbon carbon's now got four electrons there and four there bringing its outer shell up to eight but notice only four of them have come from the carbon itself, and that's its four electrons here. And if we look at the oxygens, each oxygen's got eight electrons in its outer shell, the four in the double bond and the two lone pairs, but only six of them have come from the actual oxygens themselves. And there we go, that is carbon dioxide. Now, if you found all of that quite difficult, perhaps the best thing to do is just to memorize these six diagrams as these are the most common ones and they're the ones that are named in the syllabus. So we've got hydrogen, hydrogen chloride, water, methane, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So pause the video, take some time to try and memorize those because these come up quite often. And the last thing I would say is if you're not sure at all about any of this, you will always get a mark in the exam just for something like this. So for methane, if you just did this, carbon and hydrogen, and you just drew one pair there, you'll still get at least one mark just for showing you know how to draw a covalent bond, even if you can't get the rest of it. So that's me done. Well done if you got to the end.